and then figure it out after. And that was crucial for us and my mindset, actually. Yeah. Sean, talk to me about that for a minute, because there's a lot of programs out there. And I know that they have success with these programs because people sign up and they go and and they receive the message and they come back rah, rah, rah. But a week later, they're back to their old selves. And Mm -hmm. that gratification of going to something like that withers away because they, they didn't change their mindset. You, on the other hand, saved up, went and applied what you learned. Talk about that application because I think a lot of people miss that part. Well, first of all, yeah, when you look at a lot of these events, workshops, seminars, um, you know, they're, they're very, very well done. Being a chiropractor, we understand the neurology of change and, mm-hmm. you know, the creation of neural pathways and, and, you know, neuroplasticity and how in a moment we could feel really, really good and everything sounds great. Mm-hmm. And one of the challenges when we do a program about saying yes, is that everything appears to be an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So especially right. yeah. When you've got the music and you're hyped up and everybody else is doing it, yeah. everything is an opportunity. Um, so there, the flip side of saying yes to everything is exercising discernment. So you need to pick and choose. You can't do everything. So we have to utilize discernment. Then once we have chosen what we want to do, we need to program it into our neurology. And so it's you know a daily practice of affirmations, practicing gratitude, um, locking this in, as Lacey was talking about, mm-hmm. setting alarms, you know, you, you have your Apple Watch, you can have, you know, different sayings that pop up on these alarms to really remind you and lock it in. For me, the core lesson was this. And look, every person that's listening to this right now, we have all experienced this over the last 365 days. But very early on, I realized, and, and if you can't see us, you know, if you're just hearing our voice, I am half Japanese, so I'm half Asian. And a lot of people, you know, the stereotype is that Asian people are really good at math. Well, (laughs) I realize that most people are really bad at math. And this is one of the things that stops us from abundance and actually stops us from being able to recognize opportunity and then stops us from saying yes to opportunity. And I feel like we were taught math um, in a way that was not appropriate because we were always taught that, um, especially in, in arithmetic, that it is a zero sum game. And early on in first grade, you learned Joey has five candies. Joey gave three candies to Lacey. How many candies does Joey have? And so we said, well, five minus three, that's two. And the real answer is he has as many candies as he wants, where did he get the first five? So if there was a jar with five of them and he gave three to Lacey, he could just go to the jar and get five more and he'd have seven. So it's not a zero sum game. Money is not a zero sum game either. Your gain is not somebody else's loss. You want proof of it? The United States government printed more money during the last year out of absolutely nothing. It is not a zero sum game. When you want more, you just make more. That's what the government does. Why couldn't you do the same thing? (laughs) You just want more. You just bring it in. You have more. I mean, a lot of people are probably like, yeah, but Sean, it's not that easy. But in reality, it is. If you understand that it's not a zero sum game, it literally, because it has been, can be created out of nothing. Sean, I love that because that's how I operate. My wife is always baffled. You know, (laughs) I'll, I'll come downstairs from my office. I work from home. I like, Hey, I just signed a new client or, Hey, I just started a new business. And she's like, that's so amazing to me. (laughs) Like, you you know, I live a life of abundance. I love, I learned that from David Meltzer, who was my business coach years ago. And we talk about living a life of abundance and a life of more than enough, because if you really think about it, we do have more than enough. And all those extra things are just more and more and more. Right. And uh, when we learn the value of giving back and helping others, all this comes full circle. And I just love your positioning. Um, Sean, talk to me a little bit about where you, um, gained this personality of abundance and, and was at a point where you could actually teach it to Lacey at some point. (laughs) Well, it, you know, there's this sort of cliche saying that, you know, successful people have been bankrupt and listen, this is glass, not wood, but (laughs) I've never been bankrupt. But I I have been like, I've had it and then I didn't have it and then I had it again. And then you realize through that life experience that, you know, this is all the ebb and flow 
of the tides of money coming in and coming out. I just think that, listen, and, and the amount just increases. Maybe you had $100 and then you didn't have $100. If you if that was the case, you're like, wow, okay. And then you had $1,000. Lacey and I talk about this concept. It's very tricky called the new zero. Mm. Um, and, and listen, everybody listening, please capture this. I remember when we lived in the in the you know one bedroom apartment when if we had a thousand dollars in our checking account that was awesome and as right if we, we if, felt secure that was you know, we felt good <laughs> <laughs> then you start to get a little more money and then all of a sudden something real interesting happens then it's five thousand and if it goes below five thousand you get a little panicky yeah. like oh my gosh it's under five thousand then it's ten thousand I know people that have like $250,000 in their checking account. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Why do you have that so much money in your check? And they're like, because like, you never know when like, and I was like, what in the world happens where we are burning through a quarter million dollars and we're oblivious to it. Like it went and at for- <laughs> one time they lived off of a thousand dollars, just right. like us. Right? Yeah. So 250,000 can become your new zero. It's a mind trick that happens to you. There's $250,000. So everybody listening, you have some amount of money in your more than enough that's in your checking account that provides you a degree of security. And that money literally could be invested either just through investing or invested into your business or invested into yourself to create a return. And so once you understand that, the amounts start to get bigger and the more money that you're investing, the more return you're getting. And that's how really you snowball. But I have to ahead. say, that's the key to where he had this mindset. Because if I, if I follow backwards in his life, Sean has always had a intimate relationship with money. A lot of people, when they're not doing as well as they want, they hide from their money. They mm-hmm. don't pay attention to it. They ignore it. They don't check in on their bank account, Right all of those things, Sean's always paid very close attention, whether we had a hundred dollars in the bank or a hundred thousand dollars in the bank or a million dollars in the bank, whatever it is, he always knows what's happening. And I think that that's the key. Most people like to hide and shy away. And so having a relationship with your money helps you to stay in that abundance mindset to be able to attract more in. Yeah. Yeah. What, what put you in that place, Sean? What, what made you so in tune to your money? And, and what is it that you're looking for? Well, we're big relationship people, Lacey and I both. Um, what I'm looking for is, as Lacey said, an intimate relationship with money. Um, you know, you think about, and especially too, if there's people that are listening, like you had said, well, my spouse isn't that way. Oftentimes, the, the, the significant other is disconnected from the money. Oftentimes in a relationship, there is the money person, like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm in charge of it. Well, if she's disconnected, of course she would have fears or anxiety because she's not intimately in tune with it. I think that, listen, for any relationship, if I want to have a great relationship with my wife, I need to be in constant communication with her. You would find it strange if I said to you, yeah, Jim, you know, um, and if I, this is, well, you know, we, we were on recently with your mentor, um, David Meltzer for a week with him and Julie on an Island. Well, yeah. let's say yeah. that, let's, let's say that Lacey did not go. And I told you, yeah, during the whole time that I was on the Island, I never talked to her once. You would be like, well, that's strange. And then I just said, yeah. And then I came home and I just kind of filled her in and I went back to work and you'd be like, that was, that's odd. A weird relationship. That's a weird relationship. <laughs> if while I was gone for an extended period of time, we never communicated. Well, listen, it's the same way with your money. You know, I want to be in contact and communication and in relationship with my money 24 seven. I want to know what's going on. I want to know when they leave. I want them to come back and bring friends. It's like your kids. I would rather you party at my house. So I'd rather if the money go out, go and get friends and let's party in my bank account or let's party in my investments, bring your friends around. But I I literally view it that way. I want to be in relationship with my money. I want to attract it. The way that you can attract people into your life is by being an effective communicator and being in touch with, with somebody's needs, being a giver, supporting, et cetera. And so that's literally what I try to do every single morning with our various bank accounts or various uh, in, uh, investment accounts. I, I look at QuickBooks every day. I just want to know where everybody's at. If some people are out, that's great. Call them in, come back <laughs> in, bring your friends. Let's all grow. Um, that's just all part of the money flow. You know what? That is great advice. And it's some advice that I'm going to take. And, and what my real life story is as a takeaway from this, 
we, my wife and I started investing in a conservative portfolio for each of my daughters when they were born. So they both have their own and um, we put money in every month. And when the statement arrives, I open it up, you know, hey, honey, look how much money our daughter has, you know, and then, hey, honey, look how much our other daughter has. And we're so proud of that. My wife has 100% security in what those girls have. But as I suggested, my wife has had anxiety her entire life over money based on her upbringing. And uh, my takeaway from what you just said and what I'm going to change behaviorally is I never wanted her to stress about money. So I've been the money guy, right? And uh, we don't have a lack of, but yet she doesn't see the numbers because I'm concerned about her stress of watching those five-digit checks go out for different bills, right? Like there's no way she's going to pallet this one. But, you know, to your point, because I realized um, I handed my wife earlier this year a, a very large stack of cash f- to give her confidence. Like, hey, put this in the safe. You need something. There it is, right? There's six months of our bills that you control. But she doesn't know what we have on the bank account side. So I'm going to take your advice and have her sit down with me as we start to do the bills and let her see the ebbs and flows and the value of how our money's working for us. Um, so thank you for that, by the way. And I hope that our listeners take that on as well, because... She lives in a money anxiety where she doesn't need to. And I think that you just gave me the key to that. And that was, that. That was the exposure. So, um, you know, it, it just goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show. I've got all these books to read. And if I can pick out one little tiny nugget out of that book, it was worth the hour or two to read it or 10 hours, whatever it is, um, or the podcast show. This is one of those things for me. So thank you again for that. It's great. It. Thank you. She's going to love that. Talk about um, where you guys are at now and what you're doing. I know you briefly touched on, you know, your practice and stuff like that. But how are you bringing the value to others? By the way, I saw the photos from the island uh, with David. What a great time. Uh, what, what an incredible soul. Uh, he put me on this journey of podcasting and business consulting, uh, which has led to my um, three best years in business ever. Not only... Uh, financially, but personally in terms of the reward of doing things like what we're doing right now. So I know that was a little left turn from my question to you, but tell us about what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, I'll give you three things. Um, One, we have an Amazon bestselling book called None of Your Business, same uh, name as our podcast that we host every single week. Um, If anybody would love a copy of that, I'd be happy to send them the digital copy for free. They can just email me at sean at blackdiamondclub.com, sean at S-H-A-W-N, sean at blackdiamondclub.com. And speaking of Black Diamond Club, that is our um, group that we run for service providers where we are mentoring them, supporting them. Uh, We put out, in addition to the None of Your Business podcast, another weekly podcast that are little bite-sized pieces of information that people apply into their business every single week. And also, speaking of that island, we did Meltzer Island Mastermind. Lacey and I love collaborations. We value long-term relationships. We are doing another, um, we're doing another mastermind with Dave Meltzer. They are experiential masterminds. You can go to www.experientialmastermind.com. The next one is happening at the Indianapolis 500. Wow. We're going to be taking our group uh, to Carb Day in an executive suite, as well as the race itself. We're going to be doing two full days of masterminding with myself and Lacey and David Meltzer. And we're going to be giving everybody a behind the scenes access. So if you know David Meltzer, you know he's super plugged into that world. We're going to have tons of special guests dropping in. Um, on carb day and during the race, tons of opportunities to meet amazing people, take pictures with people that you wanted to be you know, seen with or whatever you're trying to do there. <laughs> it's going to be phenomenal. Experientialmastermind.com. Um, that's super exciting. And we're doing a, if you, if you want this, I don't know the, the, um, the URL off the top of my head, but we're also doing a speakeasy with Steve Sims. I don't think that he's ever done a collaborative speakeasy. So this speaks to our collaborative nature. We love collaborations. We're doing that coming up in February in um, Scottsdale, Scottsdale. Arizona. Email me, sean at blackdiamondclub.com. I'll shoot you a link if you'd like to attend that with us. That's going to be out of control because you never know what's going to happen at a speakeasy. You just have to just know the location. That's (laughs) it. (laughs) I, I love it. I love the energy that you both bring uh, to the show and in your business and to my listeners today. Uh, thank you for your authenticity, sharing your real stories, 
And um, I just, I hope that people are listening to some of those.